Each Wednesday, we do Character Strong, and Character Strong focuses on social-emotional learning. Social-emotional learning is all about understanding and managing emotions, learning how to set and achieve positive goals, feeling and showing empathy for others, establishing and maintaining positive relationships, and making responsible decisions. Relating to one another and forming societies is a characteristic of hundreds of thousands of years of evolution. Humans have had to survive long enough to be able to change over this long period of time. Have you ever wondered how that happened? Well, our brains weren't always so advanced. We're talking over millions of years, but we had a brain that could support us in survival. The most primitive part of our brains is called the reptilian brain because it's the same as the whole brain of lizards. This is the part of our brain which automatically kicks in when you are in danger. If a speeding car is heading towards you, it's the reptilian brain that dumps adrenaline into your system so your legs can leap out of the way. You don't have to stop and think about it. It's a reflex. You might have heard it called fight or flight instinct. This part of your brain is constantly on the lookout for new situations that are different. You're always on alert. This part of the brain feels that little tickle when something in your environment is different, but you can't always tell what. Sometimes it's that just one thing is out of place. Sometimes it's just somebody got a different haircut. The difference is your brain can tell because it's always searching for threats. The limbic system is important because it controls some behaviors that are essential to the life of all mammals, finding food, self-preservation, etc. In humans, it's a lot about behaviors and routines. When you start a new habit, the limbic system is what you are working out. As you complete routines more often, your limbic system will feel the reward of the routine, like being caught up on work or feeling confident that you know where to go on Wednesdays. The last part of the brain is the neocortex, which is the center for rational thought and learning. Remember Maslow's hierarchy from last week? Well, the brain is similar. Learning happens at the top most effectively when the reptilian and limbic systems are happy. So geez, what are we talking about this science lesson for, right? Well, I want you to think about how you can have a happy reptilian and limbic brain. How can we make it easier to learn and to engage in this thinking and reasoning? Well, the reptilian and limbic brains are the happiest when they know exactly what to do and what will happen first, second, etc. There are lots of different ways we have routines in our lives, like brushing your teeth or taking a shower, saying please and thank you, even getting dressed in the morning. You use the same patterns because it makes the lower parts of your brain happy. They're content because they don't really have to think about it. Those routines are automatic. And that leaves more room for you to think about other things. Right now, our brains can feel extra tired because instead of being in school, doing learning, which we've been doing since we were five or six, all of this is new. That means the automatic routines of our brains, like going to our locker, sitting by our friends at lunch, grabbing our materials, that means our lower brains have a lot more work to do, which can make it a lot more difficult to engage with the learning parts. So what can we do? By establishing routines for ourselves that we do every time we sign on to classes, every time we do homework, etc., it makes our reptilian and limbic brain happy so we can move through our day more easily without as much mental effort. Here are some ideas for learning routines that can help your brain get to its happy place, leaving more mental energy for learning. One idea is your online schedule. It can be very different than typical school learning. Students are expected to complete their work during asynchronous time. However, you're not used to this much free time during your day. Your brain is used to trying to get work done in class. 
If you establish this routine by staying in asynchronous learning time until you complete your work, for example, that will eliminate the need for you to remember it or to come back to complete assignments later in the day or the week. As much as we might think we'll remember an assignment, when something is due or when to show up for a small group, that takes brain power. By writing items in your planner like the assignment, when it's due, and any additional information, you only have to hold that information in your head as long as it takes you to write in your planner. After that, you can refer to your planner, another routine to develop, for the information and freeing up your brain to engage with other learning. Lastly, get in the habit of going on your computer at least 10 minutes before your first class each day. Check your messages. Check your Schoology pages for the classes on that day. This brief activity will settle your brain, knowing that it has the information it needs. To support this, Ms. Sterling has created a video to help you navigate online platforms and help you establish your Schoology habits to make your brain happy. All right, so, so far you've successfully been finding your team's meeting links, you've been working on assignments, and today we're just gonna show you a few things to remember, especially for the Wednesday schedule, since we know that that has been the most confusing. So uh, you'll see here, I'm on Mr. Miller's history page, and you can see the team's meeting links, which is how you've been joining the meetings. And you can see most teachers have these current week folders uh, or unit folders, previous weeks, class links, class information. Um, so let's try to find out what's happening of Wednesday of this week. We're gonna click on the current folder, and you'll notice right now it says there's an election unit activity and that we'll have to do it, and that they're using the OneNote class notebook. Um, and that's what's on his schedule for now. If we go into a previous week, you know, we can see that here was the week and here was uh, the previous week right here. And so if we click on that, you'll see there are all sorts of things. And this one in particular says Wednesday, September 30th, and there was a discussion going on. Let's check out Senora Guerra's Spanish class. Once again, there are the team's meeting links, like all of you know. Um, and here I notice that here it says Wednesday. So there's a Wednesday team meeting link and it's asking you to come to the class. So you'll know the time that Senora Guerra put here. So in Mr. Miller's class, it looks like they did not meet in person, but instead were asked to respond to a discussion. Whereas in Senora Guerra's class, she's asking for the class to meet. Um, and then you can click on this week's assignment, assignments, and you can see there are different things that, um, you are asked to do and right now there's nothing explicitly for Wednesday probably because there was that Wednesday meeting link that was put up. Now let's check uh, Ms. Amato's computer science class. So you see the schedule up here in the team's meeting links. Looks a little different but you know how to get there. Um, and here if we go to current weeks assignments and directions uh, you can look here. Here are assignments due to this week and here's the wackiest Wednesday assignment. And I noticed in the previous folder, there are some Wacky Wednesday offline STEAM activities. So you'll want to go there to find out what exactly you're doing there. Um, this is an example of a science class. So if we scroll down past the meeting links, uh, you'll notice here there's uh, this folder with microbiome. Biome. So if I click on this, um, this one shows you kind of what you're working on and then what you're supposed to be doing. And so for example, this one says come to schedule class only if you received an email directly from me. And if you remember the uh, lesson we did last week, that's how you get to your Outlook email, which is what we're asking people to do. Uh, this is Ms. Maxwell's class. And you'll notice once again, here are the Microsoft Teams meeting links. Um, and I can click here for this week. And you'll notice here, like it says no live class. So I know that I'm not gonna go to class, but that I'm gonna be doing these assignments. And if I look at Mr. Wire's history class, here are the team's meeting links. Um, and then if I click on the current unit, um, you'll notice here it says independent work time um, of what you're doing and current events. And here's some things about independent work time. 
So you'll see each class looks a little bit different as you've been figuring out. The key to Wednesdays is uh, remembering that you are checking to see whether you are meeting as a small group or as a whole class or whether you have independent work to do and it just varies depending on the time. If you're confused about the schedule for Wednesday uh, in terms of if, when you have to go to class, you can always go to the Eckstein Library Schoology page and right at the top there's this weekly online schedule which will take you to um, an online schedule. The other thing to pay attention to in Schoology are the calendar. Um, now I'm going to go back to an actual course because the library doesn't really have any uh, upcoming assignments. Um, and I'm going to go back to the main page. And you'll notice here it says uh, right now there's nothing upcoming for uh, Mr. Miller's class, but let's say you missed something from the past. You can go ahead and click on this little symbol right here and it can show you what was from previous. So if you want to catch up on something and when you click on it, you can then view the item and then you'll be able to figure out what you need to do. So different classes, it'll look a little bit different. So once again, I'm going to click on the materials or I can click back, back here. Oh, I'm in the main page. Um, and I can see here, here I have some assignments here uh, that I can click on if I need to submit. And once again, if I need to go to the calendar to see things that are previous, then I can go here and I can click on any of them to view the item. And then the last thing to pay attention to is messages. Now last week we told you to check your Outlook email, which we still recommend. It's what teachers and staff and students are kind of moving toward. But there are still messages sometimes sent to a whole class in Schoology. Um, and it's just good to make sure, like I see right now I have six messages. And if I click on that, then I'll be able to see what my messages are so that I know if I have to respond to anything. So just make sure as right now as we're transitioning to using email that you're checking both that Outlook email and also your Schoology messages. Thanks. Okay, put it to the test. Visit your six Schoology pages. Find out what each class has planned for asynchronous time today and put it in your planner. If it's an independent assignment, write that in your planner. And if it's independent work time, look at the work in that class. If you're not done with an assignment, write that in your planner for that period's work today. Step by step and establishing new habits, we will make it easier to learn and make more routine this online learning platform.